Great to see you all. Welcome to worship at St. Athanasius on this second Sunday of Easter. And I want to welcome those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, and we invite you to sing the hymns. Uh, you will be muted, so you don't have to worry about anybody listening to you, uh, except those in your own home. But we invite you to sing and to um, pray the responses that are printed in bold uh, as a way of participating more actively. Um, you will be unmuted at several points where we can really experience being a community together. So uh, I look forward to those moments, especially with you. We are into many weeks of this quarantine, and it looks like it's going to be longer. Um, I hope you've all seen some benefits to the kinds of communication we're having now, um, and I think that's a good thing. So um, let's bring our resurrection and Easter witness to all that is going on as we worship on this second Sunday in Easter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Reply after I say, great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Together, amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us sing along as Rachel leads us in the opening hymn, glory is the glory. Thank you. 
Let us read responsively this song of praise, a song of creation. Let the whole creation bless the Lord. Praise Great and exalt, exalt our, our God, God forever. forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Praise, Praise and exalt, exalt our, God our God forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Bless, bless the, the Lord, Lord, all you heavenly hosts. hosts. Bless the Lord, all you dwellers on earth. Praise bless and exalt our God, God forever. forever. Bless the Lord, you people of God. Bless the bless Lord, the Lord, you, you priests of the Lord. Lord. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Praise, Praise and exalt, and exalt our, our God, God forever. forever. Bless the Lord, all you that are upright in spirit. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord you that, that are holy and humble, and humble in heart. In heart. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise, Praise and exalt, exalt our God, God forever. forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as was, it was in the, in the beginning, beginning, is, is now, now, and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Once again, I welcome you, all those on Facebook and those of you who are on Zoom, to this community. It's community celebration of morning prayer. Uh, welcome each and every one of you and look forward to hearing your voices as we share the peace, as we share our prayers further on in the service. So listen as we read the scriptures, respond as we say the prayers, sing along as we sing, and let the reflections on the word and on our lives be something that renews us this morning. Amen. Let us call ourselves to the word as we say this litany together. As God who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Spirit of God, Spirit of God search our hearts. hearts. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember, remember those whose who lives are at stake. Are May we who have no risk factors Remember, remember those, those most vulnerable. May we who have the, history, the luxury of working from home. Remember those who those must choose between, between preserving their health, health and making their making rent. Them. May we who have the flexibility to care for children when schedule allows. Remember those, those who, who have, have no options. options. May we who have to cancel our trips. Remember, Remember those who have no safe, safe place, place to go. May we who are losing margin money in the tumult of the economic market. Remember, Remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for quarantine at home. Remember those, those who have no have home. home. As fear grips our country. Let us, Let us choose, choose love. love. And during this time, when we may not be able to physically wrap our arms around each other. Let us find, find ways, ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbor. Our neighbor. Amen. Amen. We thank you for, to Father Michael Graham for writing that prayer. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us rejoice. Rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name. And, and tell of your salvation from day to day. We proclaim your glory to the nations. Our, our praise to the ends of the earth. earth. And now our brother Paul Keeley will read the first lesson from the book of Acts. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. but. God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, 
I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let you, your Holy One, experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And now Rachel will lead us in this version of Psalm 16. Keep me safe, O God. A good prayer for all of us in these days. Keep me 
Now the second reading will be led by Gertie, a reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us sing our gradual hymn, Let It Breathe on Me. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples re Rejoiced when they saw the Lord, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believe, come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Why is it that this first Sunday of Easter, after the greatest celebration of the Christian year, we find Jesus' followers locked in fear? Shouldn't the Easter season be full of courage because now the worst has happened and God won the victory? Isn't that what Easter is about? Well, maybe we will get there, but it seems like the path to get there always leads through fear. And maybe this year we understand that better than most years because fear is everywhere. Fear is even where it's taking the form of denial and defiance in attempting to liberate states from their commitments to fight the disease. That too is an expression of fear. Perhaps if we can admit that we're afraid, we might be able to discover the Easter gift that will pull us through to the promised life. I found in the experience that people have with Lou Gehrig's disease, a metaphor for how to walk through fearful experiences. And I've only watched one person move through the various stages of that disease, but it showed me a lot. Gary was a former clergy colleague of mine. And the first time I saw him after being di diagnosed with the disease, was at a birthday party that was held for him. His chest had collapsed, his thin stomach was sagging, and it was hard for him to catch his breath. I'd never seen him like that before. And at one point in the party, Gary gathered all of his friends and told us how he was hoping to remain strong enough to participate in an experimental treatment that involved placing electrodes on the diaphragm that, in, that can be controlled by a small box worn at the waist. The electrodes would be activated by electricity stored in the box, which would cause the diaphragm to contract, which in turn would compress and release the lungs. And that's what happens every time we breathe. That rather scientific view has more relevance these days, doesn't it? But that experiment basically consisted of plugging a key muscle, the diaphragm, into a new energy source that would make it work. Well, when Jesus walked into the room where the disciples were huddled in fear, grief, confusion, guilt, and anger, he found them afflicted with a spiritual version of Lou Gehrig's disease. All of their spiritual muscles had been unplugged because of the debilitating emotions they felt as a threat, as a result of the threat the crucifixion signaled for their own lives. In those dark, confusing days, immediately following Jesus' execution at the hands of Roman soldiers, 
and at the instigation of the Judean authorities, the disciples were probably asking themselves, how long do you think we can last in these conditions? Well, today, some people are asking a similar question during this time of quarantine and social distancing. How long do you think this can last? William Sloan Coffin spoke words to his congregation that address the apostles' situation and our own. He said to that congregation in New York many decades ago, the primary religious task these days is to try to think straight. You can't think straight with a heart full of fear, for fear seeks safety, not truth. If your heart's a stone, you can't have decent thoughts, either about personal relations or about international ones. A heart full of love, on the other hand, has a limbering effect on the mind. Well, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that we need straight thinking more today than we've ever needed it before. So what was that new energy source that Jesus plugged the disciples into when he arrived on the scene? He breathed on them and spoke the words, peace be with you. And then he plugged them into an energy source called the Holy Spirit. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. The disciples were seeking safety, and the truth came instead. And the truth empowered them to love. But that empowerment actually happened in two stages, didn't it, in this passage? Jesus helped the disciples connect the need for healing and the need to express their vocation. So the first time he said, peace be with you. It was about healing their wounds by showing them his own. But the second time was about calling forth their vocation. And on that time, he added, as God sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. I experienced a contemporary version of this when I read a book entitled Breathing Spaces by Heidi Newmark, a Lutheran pastor who was pastoring a church in the Bronx. First, she describes the connection between spirituality and breathing. She says, those who study the science of breath emphasize the importance of breathing from the diaphragm rather than from the chest. Shallow, rapid chest breathing is related to our fight or flight response whereas slow, deep breathing from the diaphragm channels fresh, energizing oxygen into the far recesses of the lungs, the blossoming tips of each branch of the bronchial tree called avioli. Well, anyone who practices yoga knows that that's true, even though you may not know the science of it. Well, this author goes on to show the connection between healing wounds and discovering vocation. She writes, my alveoli were not flowering as they should. I felt short of breath, my throat clenched, the tracheal trunk clogged and shrunk. I was crying easily, losing patience with the children, having no resistance, walking around without skin, lost to myself. And so she asked herself, was this the beginning of burnout? It might have been, she said, but it wasn't. It was the beginning of this book. Writing would keep me from going over the edge again. Writing became a door to contemplation and a channel for grief. My friends, it was no coincidence that Heidi wrote a book out of her own need for healing. It was tied intimately into who she was. In the same way, Jesus's followers received a calling that emerged directly from their need for the healing power of forgiveness that had been accomplished in the resurrection. Their commission, the commission that Jesus gave them was, 
if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, stated clearly why this makes sense. He said, for the disciples, the resurrection was an experience of forgiveness. They had abandoned Jesus, become complicit with his murderers. The fact that the resurrection was happening to them was an experience of forgiveness for them that became a vocation of forgiveness. You see how that works? And so for us, this will sometimes mean standing for life as God breathers in our world, exhaling hope, spiritual vitality, and relational healing. Wendell Berry says, we are called to practice resurrection by breathing God's presence, embracing and sharing it with the life-giving power of the Easter Christ. Like the apostles, we are called to plug our wounds into the energy source of the Holy Spirit and then be sent into the world, specifically to the brokenness of the world, because we are the body of Christ. Jesus' presence at work in the world. And even during this season, when we're supposed to stay in our rooms, we don't have to be locked in our rooms in fear. Social distancing cannot be an excuse for sequestering ourselves from the world's pain. Because when we do that, we're hiding ourselves from ourselves and from Christ's presence. But fortunately, Jesus keeps after us. He keeps breathing peace into us. And in these days, that breath must be powerful enough to break through the resistance of our logical minds. I loved Richard Rohr's word this week about the cruciform shape to reality. He wrote this, if we try too hard to understand it, we will stop the process or steer it in the wrong direction. It seems there is a cruciform shape to reality with cross purposes, paradoxes, and conflicting intentions everywhere. Jesus hangs right there amid them, not even perfectly balancing them, but just holding them. My friends, today's gospel in this time requires us to enter that paradox of finding the truth of the story for today. So we must accept Jesus's breath to give us power to drop our masks on our souls, even as we keep literal masks over our noses and mouths, and to give us power to unlock the doors of our hearts, even as we stay behind the doors of our homes out of love for ourselves and others and to give us power to touch the places where the body of Christ is still suffering, even as we refrain from physical touch for a season. Each of us has a part. None of us can solve the whole mess. But the more of us who can allow the vocation that emerges out of our woundedness to be that exhale after Jesus breathes healing forgiveness into us, the more healing will be released into the world. May God plug each of us into that power. Amen. We continue by sharing the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Also with you. And share that peace virtually with one another as we <laughs> virtually hug ourselves and each other. <laughs> peace, Albert. Peace, Hannah. Peace, 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 Peace,
Peace and love, Rachel. Peace and love to all of you. Veronica. Peace and love to everyone. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love, Leon. Love. It's hard to get you back reined in in church. It's even harder online. Good luck, Frank. Oh, but it's fun to see you all. This is a great moment of community. Um, and I, I do want to share. Um, I want us to, I, I realize that I've been forgetting to um, sing the happy birthday song um, as we are online. Um, and yesterday was Jerry. Jerry's birthday, Jerry's birthday. Oh, and today oh, is yeah. Saul's birthday. Oh. And uh, Saul, oh. I see, is watching on Facebook Live, and he's probably just down the hall. So <laughs> maybe we could sing to Jerry and Saul um, okay. a very unsynced <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday okay. to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Saul. Happy birthday And many more. Okay, and many more. And so don't forget to uh, let us know. Anybody else celebrating a birthday that wants to admit it? <laughs> okay. I also want to say to all of you on Zoom and on Facebook, um, don't hesitate to call me if you have a need. Um, there are, I'm finding that a number of people are losing jobs, are struggling having enough food, um, and I'm, I'm thrilled that some folks have called me, and so we can do something about that when people call me. Um, and so please, um, some of you actually have donated to our uh, discretionary accounts. Um, and so if there are financial needs, uh, we can help with those as well. Um, but I do want to remind you that the food bank at St. Athanasius um, is open um, and it continues to be open on Fridays. Um, so if you have a need for food, or if you know someone who has a need for food, uh, let them know, please. Um, we, we are keeping social distance in the line and in the serving. We are requiring both volunteers and the public to have masks. So um, don't hesitate to um, call people's attention to that. Um, I also um, want to remind you that the um, uh, offerings, uh, we are continuing to receive those uh, on our website. And uh, I've asked Yane to put that here for those who may not know what that is, uh, saintala.org slash donate. Um, if you go there, you can make a donation online. Um, if that doesn't work for you, you can also uh, send a check to 840 Echo Park, LA 90026. Uh, and we will eventually get it and take it um, to the credit union to the cash. But uh, as you know, we continue to have expenses as a church. Uh, salaries continue to be paid. Uh, we continue to have other expenses uh, around this very website and, and other matters. So uh, we appreciate your giving, and I, I especially appreciate those of you who have been doing that. Um, and I just want to encourage you all, stay at home. Uh, encourage others to as well. Um, keep those masks on, and uh, it looks like we're going to have to go with this for a while longer. Um, but be creative and find your vocation in ways to express your love even more, maybe, than we do normally. So as we receive the offering, let us hear Rachel as she sings uh, the Laudate from Mozart.
Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us enter into this time of prayer as we call each other to prayer, and Rachel leads us in the Laudate Domini. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And as we prepare for our own intercessions, let us read responsively this litany of thanksgiving and intercession. In the midst of the fear, reduce reduce the rise of the victory. In the midst of isolation, Empower us to work to reduce loneliness. As the numbers of those sick with this disease rise, heal as well the diseases of our souls. Where there is death, bring Bring forth forth a rebirth of love. Behind the noises of panic, open us to witness birds singing again, again, sky clearing clearing, and earth earth healing. So who and what are on your hearts today? I invite those who are on Facebook Live to write your prayer requests and I will read them to the community. Uh, Those on Zoom, you are unmuted. We invite you to share your prayer requests. I'll get us started. I, I wanna pray for two members of our Spanish part of our congregation. Uh, Raul Morales um, was taken to the hospital on Friday uh, with uh, pneumonia and influenza. Uh, Remember influenza, it's what we used to get before coronavirus, but it turns out that the symptoms are almost identical. Um, And so he is in the hospital getting medication, pray for him. And Amanda, uh, uh, another member uh, who has lost three friends um, this last week to coronavirus and actually missed the Spanish service because she was at a virtual funeral for one of them. So um, it gets close to home. I lift up Jesse Carlos. He's a cousin of Francisco Garcia, a former priest in our diocese. Um, He has been diagnosed with the disease and is fighting for his life. A cousin of Francisco. I have two other friends who lost friends um, this week to the virus, Sherry and escapes me right now. I offer prayers for all the people working in the essential services that we so sorely need during this time of isolation. They are risking their lives to some extent to keep us going. Yes. Their safety. Uh, 
I learned of the passing of someone that I knew years ago, Robbie Brown. So I wanted to say a prayer for him. And for Robbie him. Brown? Is his name? Robbie Brown. Okay. Yeah. What's up, Robbie Brown? Well, I just want to pray for all those who feel like trapped in their houses that they don't decide to go out more than they need to, and that they're able to find some sort of consolation in their homes. Other prayer requests? All right. Let us conclude with the collects. Eternal Father, through the resurrection of your Son, help us to face the future with courage and assurance, knowing that nothing in death or life can ever separate us from your love. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, you are risen from the dead, and we are risen with you. May our life never deny this eternal life, this peace and hope and joy. Praise and glory to the God of life who is stronger than all kinds of death. Alleluia. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and new alternatives, bring you new life. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Let us sing together before we enjoy our sharing time together. <laughs> We are raised to new life with Christ. Go in God's peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Yeah. Alleluia. Yeah. Alleluia. Yeah. Yeah. Alleluia. Yeah. Alleluia. Yeah. Oops. Luca, what's going on? Is he saying her alleluia? <laughs> we got you. That's alleluia. <laughs> Not Gertie, huh, Paul? <laughs> oh. That was me. There, oh, she's there. Yeah. She is here. She is Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, there she is. Oh. <laughs> very quiet. Very pretty. What's her name? Oh, she's looking at her ball. Gertie. What's her name, Paul? Her name is Gertie. 
With Are you e. kidding? With an E. With an E. e. <laughs> Not with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? With oh, there's, uh, there's Adam. What's your name, Adam? Uh, this is Rusty. Hi, Rusty. Oh. Uh, Izzy, come here. Come on, Izzy. <laughs> now she's sitting and she won't come. <laughs> it was good all day yesterday when I was online with classes and she never made a peep. <laughs> and mine is asleep, fast asleep. <laughs> well, she usually is in the morning. Judith, is your cat around? He's out. He's outside. Yeah, he's outside. Mm -hmm. He's outside. Coming <laughs> around. So how are people doing? Nice to see you, Eric. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Good to see you all too. Nice to see all those pictures of uh, empty streets of downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. 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 It's wild. Yeah. Uh. What else is going on, people? What, how's your weekend? Anybody want to share? Changing on Netflix. <laughs> What'd you say, Ed? Binging on Netflix. Netflix. That's about it. Binging on Netflix. There's that. <laughs> I went to Trader Joe's. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, um, me like, and my friends have been playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, so there's that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dragons, okay. I haven't played that since I was a teenager, I don't think. <laughs> You're more than welcome to join us anytime when this is all over. Oh, uh, uh, and, and that wasn't online when I was a teenager. <laughs> that was in the fields next to the house. <laughs> anybody, is anybody going to work? Outside of the house? What is actually to be able to What's that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's something that a lot of people still do, amazingly. Yeah. Yeah. You take the bus. Yeah, the buses are pretty empty, but mm -hmm. I, I feel for people who have to be on them to get around. Yeah. But yeah. They, I mean, I, I look at them and I see them keeping their social distance. Is Soul painting? Um, not at the moment. Um, <laughs> he's probably talking on the phone. He's getting a lot of birthday <laughs> greetings today. So oh, I want to see talking with his family in Mexico <laughs> and other people who are giving him calls. So, yeah. So, yeah. I imagine it's well, Adam, Adam's giving us a tour. What were you headed at? I'm making breakfast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> breakfast? It's almost lunch. It's time for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know oh, we can do your it. circadian I rhythm. So, I, how many of you have taken showers already today? <laughs> I did. I, 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 I haven't. <laughs> no. are, are we beginning to smell? Me, so. <laughs> Are we beginning to smell, Frank? Uh, we're not. No, I took a shower yesterday, last night. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've changed my habits. Water on the face this morning. I did put on deodorant this morning, so just in case anything's going through. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Technology's not that good yet. In, in case you run into me on the streets. <laughs> but at six feet, I don't think it comes through anyway. I'm pretty sure Saul appreciates that. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's the same way, so. Where's Carmine? I'll, I'll feed it. Carmine. I'm yeah, I'll be there. How are you? Yeah. you. Adam, I tell us what you're making. Oh, you're making me? Eggs? Huh? Me? Adam's no, making Carmine. eggs. Oh, I'm, do I'm oh. doing eggs and bacon with toast. Oh. Oh, oh wow. Okay. The best. <laughs> Yes. Please share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keeping it standard. <laughs> if I can find my yeah, I'm pan. having my tea. Oh, and Carmini's having her tea. Okay. Yes. Sorry, and, I need to be. Uh, Thank you for being communicado. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was out of sight a while ago. 
Oh, good. Because it's, okay. My... it's okay, Carmini. We know you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're not going to say where you are. <laughs> good, good. Very confidential. At this time, every, every one of us is under that category. Right. Um, yeah. Well, it seems like it's so sunny outside. It's a bit yeah, it's not here. Not here. Not here. Oh, not there? No. Is that where, where are you, uh, Judith? Uh, uh, east of Long Beach. East of Long Beach, okay. So it's still okay. beach. Yeah. Oh, you're still, you still get the clouds of the beach. Look, yeah. Look here. I'll show I'm in you. Pasadena and it's cloudy. Yeah. Yes. Pasadena is cloudy. Uh, I'll show you the view. The last few days, it starts out kind of sunny early, but then it turns cloudy. Well, <coughs> this is like the summer outside. Wow. Not quite. Yeah, see? You all keep That's jumping around on my gallery here, and I'm trying to show your faces to the Facebook Live people. You keep jumping around, so I lose you. <laughs> well, it's... We don't actually, I don't know what makes that happen. I don't either, but it, but you experienced it happening too, I assume. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, and why, do we sh why do we show up in the same place? I'm always on the upper left somehow. And Ed's I'm always- I'm upper right right now. You're in my well, upper right. Yeah. That's true, the reverse. Why am I always in the same place? <laughs> no, you've changed. You've changed even in this for me. Oh, okay. Well, I we could get myself in the same place. Okay, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're closest to Frank. You're right. I know. The... I know. I know. No, and you're. Just... I'm next to Frank. No, right. it's on the other side. And Paul is just below Frank. So we see each <laughs> other, but we all see each other in different places. That's yeah. So yeah. What's that about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's an Chris? interesting algorithm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, you're, God. I think you're always the first one. if you're in Windows or Apple. Oh, you have a cat. You have a cat, Eric. I wonder yeah, if she's coming. I'll be only. What's her name? Irene. Oh. What's her name? Irene. Oh. Irene? <laughs> look at that face. Oh, there is Irene. Oh, look at that. I love her face. Oh, Very serious. Oh. Beautiful yeah. cat. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Oh. It's early. Annie, how are you? Sorry. Annie, how are I'm you fine. doing? I'm good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You're the the person closest to the front line that I know. So yeah. any, any report from the front lines? <laughs> oh. Well, I hear people say that, but I actually, uh, I mean, m my life is pretty changed, but so is everybody else's. It is true that I'm, I'm probably in a lot more risky situations than everyone mm -hmm. else, but I don't think that the situation is affecting me any more than it's affecting anyone else. Mm -hmm. And that is to say that it's affecting all of us really deeply. Um, my hospital has you, you know, as best I can tell, and maybe you guys who are watching the news more than me, and here comes my cat, if it sounds like that. Another I'm, cat. <laughs> yeah, she's old and she yowls. And so <laughs> she's coming. I love Sorry. It. I, love it. I love it. Anyhow, my um, hospital has not suffered a surge. And I don't know how it is at other hospitals. There is testing now so that everyone who comes in the hospital is getting a, uh, everyone who comes to the emergency room to the hospital is getting a test. So we have some understanding of who actually has the disease and who doesn't. And so that's lowered the anxiety level in the hospital quite a bit. Um, yeah. I mean, I could go on and on, but it, it's, yeah. <laughs> so, Annie, how long does it take to get a test result? I was just going to ask. You know, well, in uh, our hospital, uh, for these particular people that they're giving them to in the emergency room, a couple of hours. We're doing them in our lab in the hospital. Um, I, I don't know how it is in other hospitals, and I do know that they're 
are still some tests being given out there that take days to get results, um, but not for the people who are coming through our emergency department. Oh, here, let me. Yeah, there's you. a tail there. Oh, oh look oh. at her. Go get Bella. mine. This is Bella. Yeah. Bella. Bella. Yeah, and I'm so lucky to have her because one of yes. the things that I think is really yes. going to deeply affect all of us is that we can't touch each other. Yeah. And that so has been the hardest part of yeah. my job. I think you guys all, well, I mean, when you can't touch family members whose loved ones are dying and they can't touch their loved ones. In fact, if they're COVID, people who are dying, they can't even come in to see them. Yeah. And that, I just yeah. lost everybody. But I think that that lack of being able to touch one another is that is for all of us. Well, somehow I signed out. Yeah. Very difficult. Oh. We still see you, Judith. Yeah. Well, it says I signed out. Okay, well, yeah, you're you're, there. I'll stay there and listen to you. And you're making me think ahead to, um, Blessing of the animals at the beginning of October on St. Francis Day. That even if we're back in the church, wouldn't it be nice to be able to do that on Zoom and have everybody with their animals? So that yes, we can yes, yes, yes. Um, but I would never bring my cat to church. Right, and, and right. alone. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That would be a nice thing. Yeah. I'm going to say goodbye. I have a family to go to. Hi, Paul. Hey, bye, bye, Paul. Bye, bye, Paul. Thanks for being with us. Bye. Yeah. Nice to see you all. Nice to see you all. Good to see you and And don't forget to be in touch. Call. Thank you. Thank you for having me. have to you. rename I'm his dog. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye. 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 Hi, Ed. Annie, I, I react to the, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much 23-7 in an apartment by myself alone. The one hour oh. is walking around, exercise. Yeah. And there's, there's, no, there's no touch. Yeah. There is, um, it's, I read. I've got, I'm working on two great books. I do uh, all kinds of things. I talk on the phone a lot. Yeah. And uh, Deborah and I, and uh, it's uh, FaceTime. But um, no, it's interesting. It's a lot of, internal, a lot of internal, which is not my strong suit. <laughs> yeah. All of internalizing things. Well, I do, I wonder how that is for people. I mean, I'm, I'm at least going to work and seeing my colleagues and having some sort of social interaction. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting. I will say, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of vigilance about being sure I'm not touching mm -hmm. things, my hands yeah. are clean, I'm not touching my face and, and all of that is sort of exhausting. But I do, I don't think what I'm going through is any more or less stressful than, you know, what I hear in, in that, David, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry for that. You know, what I'm wondering too, I did a couple of Easter things with, with friends on uh, Friday, Good Friday, and on Saturday in my yard with just five, five people, or, you know, and actually the Good Friday was a few more, but we kept distance. And I'm wondering if that is something that some of us who live closer together could at least do or go for a walk or something yeah, uh, that. so that we yeah. can see each other. It's great to see each other on, in Zoom, but it's just not the same. It's just not the same. No, it's not, but it is important. It is to be important to be heard and seen, no matter how it works. I mean, yeah. I, right. I'm right. not so much better when I just, answered to and spoke about what was going on with me um, that, uh, that I felt seen. Yeah. And heard. Yeah. And the, next, the next is to kind of see actual, your, your actual person, <laughs> you know, or you know, right. you know. What are you reading, David? 
I'm reading a book that Frank recommended to me called um, The Sword of Constantine. Oh. Oh. James Carroll. James yeah. Carroll? Yeah, James Carroll. James Carroll. Oh, the good writer. Oh, he's oh, yeah. fabulous. And he's thick, too. Yeah, that's a thick book. Sort of. Yeah. I'm reading another long, I chose them because they're long, and I'm reading David Copperfield. Uh, <laughs> interesting choices. Yeah, good. <laughs> Well, for anybody that's interested in something uplifting and um, easy, fast read, um, I've actually just started it for school, but it's a um, memoir by uh, Barbara Harris called Alleluia Anyhow. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lovely yeah. book. Um, good. Good. So if you want something that's gonna make you, you know, maybe infused with the spirit, uh, I recommend that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I sure ended that conversation. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I think Father Frank has been kicked out. <laughs> he got kicked oh, out? I heard him. I thought I heard him. <laughs> he dropped out? Yeah, oh. he, he's not on my list of participants oh, in no. Oh, yeah, he's gone. Oh, Anyhow, oh, well, have a great oh, day, guys. It was, it's yeah, good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I do nice have a you, weekday morning prayer at Hi. nine if you would like to join me. Oh, it's really nice. good. Oh, so nice. see you next week. Okie dokie. Okay. Bye, bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, everyone.